Yeah. I've watched this summer the plants grow and even my wife has been amazed at what a difference there's been this year in the growth of many of our plants that <laughs> limped along inside the house this winter and uh, it's been a joy to see the fruitfulness that they've developed in having the shade in the hot sun but having the warmth of it in the morning sun to bring about with watering and with fertilizing the abundancy that each one of the plants seem to have and you know our life is like that is that if you really want to have abundance it's not in wealth and it's not in possessions it's in all of these things that God puts together into your life to cause you to be fruitful to cause you to multiply to cause you to grow in all the different areas of your life that you affect you may not know it but your positive effect on other people is part of what Jesus meant when he said I came to give you life and life more abundantly because you're not going to find satisfaction in possessions you'll accumulate them and then you'll have a garage full of things you never participate in or you'll have a storage unit or you'll have a house full of junk that you never use anymore but you have them just in case and you might hoard them who knows but the abundant life is more than that because it's more than possessions or prosperity the abundant life is in the wealth of friendships and relationships and those people that you affect and the things that you do and how you appreciate them and offer them up to God in your prayer time and in your sharing and caring for them because that's what God wanted you to have inside you is his heart that he cares for the world so much that he loved it and gave his son for those who are living without hope and without joy and without abundance that you might have when you want and seek the Lord today remember that he's blessed you in a peculiar way that you were to share with others and not own for yourself in my utmost after obedience what and straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side mark 6:45 we are apt to imagine that Jesus Christ constrains us and we obey him. He will lead us to great success. We must never put our dreams of success as God's purpose for us. His purpose may be exactly the opposite. God never said prosperity. He said abundance. We have an idea that God is leading us to a particular end, a desired goal, our goal. He is not. The question of getting to a particular end is a mere incident we call the process God what we call the process God calls the end what you are going through is what God is doing and today is the day that he is determined for you to be in that what is my dream of God's purpose his purpose is that I depend on him and on his power now if I can stay in the middle of the turmoil, calm and unperplexed, that is the end of the purpose of God in my life. God is not working toward a particular finish. His end is the process. It is what you are going through. That I see him walking on the ways. No shore in sight, no success, no goal. Just the absolute certainty that all is right because I see him walking on the sea. It is the process, not the end, which is glorifying to God. What you're going through and how you react to it is His satisfaction in you. That is where your abundant life is. God's training is for now, not soon. His purpose is for this minute, not for something in the future. What you have determined to be the end of your faith is really only the results of what you have been going through all along and God has equipped you for that moment in the moment that you're in today when you hear his voice we have nothing to do with the afterwards of obedience we get wrong when we think of the 
afterwards or later or tomorrows. What men call training and preparation, God calls the end of. God's end is to enable me to see what he can walk on the chaos of my life just now. How can God move in you today and how can you see him in a different way now, this moment, as you walk with him? If we have a further end in view, we may not pay sufficient attention to the immediate present. We're not living in the now. If we realize that obedience is the end, then each moment as it comes is precious. Every moment that you are alive is a wonderful sight and opportunity in God's view to make you aware that this now is your time. This is the moment that he creates in you to cause you, as you are, the way you are, to be filled with him, to be totally equipped with him, if one thing you need only do. One thing is all that he is requiring. And only one thing does he ask, and that is to obey. Because to obey is better than sacrifice, and when you obey, you demonstrate trust in him which is the fruit of faith faith people like to make all kinds of acronyms and ideas about but if you trust using intelligence knowing that God is greater than any of your circumstances and worries then you have faith if you don't trust you have no faith it's pretty simple <laughs> so will you trust God today with you.